this is probably the most challenging uh, question you'll have to deal with um, for the imaginary value i. And it deals with the complex conjugate here. So what is the complex conjugate? So basically we have the fraction three minus five i over eight plus two i. So two different complex numbers. And we have to figure out which of the answer choices is an equivalent form to that. And what you need to do basically is multiply by the complex conjugate. So it will be in this instance, eight minus two I. So the conjugate is where you're taking the same value and just flipping the sign in the middle. All right. And then we multiply by eight minus two I over eight minus two I. Mm -hmm. And then this will help to get rid of the I we have to distribute here. Obviously we know that I squared is equal to negative one. And as they tell us in the note, I is equal to square root of negative one. So I squared is equal to negative one. So you just need to distribute on top, multiply it. You, you could foil it out. So first <laughs> so times did. first, 24. Our outer times outer. Inner times inner. Last times last. And on the bottom, first times first, 64. Outer times outer. Inner times inner. Last times last. Okay. Exactly. And then now we can plug in our negative one wherever we have an I squared. So I was actually just talking about this right before this tutoring session. I mean, we can get really complicated with the imaginary number I, or we could just say, okay, for many questions, you want to just treat I like an X, like kind of like we've been doing so far, but also okay. just know that I squared is negative one and I to the fourth is positive one. Sorry to interrupt you there, Patrick. Oh, that's a good point. So because the yellow things, the I squares are equal to negative one, that's going to reverse the sign of this whole thing. That's why we called that negative 10 and it shouldn't have had an I there, just negative 10. Negative 10. And we call this positive four. And then also just in case some students didn't see it, the negative 16 I plus the 16 I is going to cancel out obviously from the step before. Yep, so those cancel. And so you got 64 plus four on the bottom, so 68 on the bottom. And 14 minus 46 I, and how do we get to the answer from here? Well, again, if you aren't sure how to go from here to one of the four answer choices, look at the format. As you can see, they broke it down into two separate fractions. So you simplify the first fraction would be seven over 34, which rules out A and B off the bat. And then the other part, the second fraction would be negative 46 over 68, or sorry, negative 46 I over 68, which would be negative 23 I over 34. Okay, so just a couple of little notes to make here. Um, when you have a binomial in your denominator, that's going to have either a radical in it or an I imaginary number in it. That's where you're going to use the complex conjugate. Now, what is the complex conjugate? It's the idea that when you multiply a plus B times a minus B and you foil it out, you're always going to have this purple thing happening right here. Because if I do first outer inner last, I'm going to have a squared minus a b plus a b minus b squared. And this is always what's going to happen. So what are we saying? We're saying that if I multiply something by, um, if I multiply a binomial like this green one by a binomial like this orange one, I'm going to get the outer and inner terms canceling. And we take advantage of that to get rid of the i in this situation. So. We don't want to have radicals or I on the bottom and we multiply by like an opposite number in order to get, in order to get rid of it. It's just like a little trick of the trade called the complex conjugate. And you know, something that you'll see on any SAT anywhere ever is the idea that 
if you have two perfect squares with a minus sign in between, that's called the difference of squares. And that'll always factor to x plus y times x minus y, right? Which is, we just did that in, in opposite. We had a squared minus b squared, and we got that from a plus b, a minus b. So if it's not something that you're really sharp on already, that's a, a capital little factoid that you want to be good at for the SAT. And if it sounds like a lot of information, complex conjugate. 8 plus 2i, 8 minus 2i. To simplify here, I know there, there's a lot of writing up there. Very <laughs> good sure points, but just to is. simplify the complex conjugate when you see a fraction like the one we have in our question. Yep, the complex conjugate is just the, that, that little part right there.